You have Josh Allen going number one overall. Why do you think the Browns would take Allen over Darnold at number one? I think if you check the history of John Dorsey, I think it would make sense. John Dorsey was at Green Bay when I was there when Brett Favre was a three-time MVP. He saw that um, at Gunslinger with exceptional talent and athleticism can do magical things. Um, you take that and you then follow his career as the leader of the Kansas City Chiefs. He went with Eric Fisher over Luke Joko, a guy who's a better athlete, so he opted to take the projection over the production. He then, a year ago, elected to go with Pat Mahomes over Deshaun Watson. And when you look at Deshaun Watson, he was maybe the more polished player, but Pat Mahomes was so tantalizing with his arm talent, his gunslinging capabilities, and his ability to make things happen off the cuff that you very well could see John Dorsey fall in love with Josh Allen, see what Josh Allen could be if he worked out some of his, his issues because he is athletic. He does have A-plus arm talent and he's big and physical. He is all those things that typically entices John Dorsey. I could very well imagine him being a Cleveland Brown on draft. So then that would present the Giants with a unique situation that they have Darnold drop into their laps and then have an option for Saquon Barkley, have an option, obviously, for Quentin Nelson if they want to go offensive line, although that's a bit of a long shot now. And then there's Bradley Chubb, uh, a pass rusher, or the fact that I imagine anybody who loves Darnold uh, like the Broncos who have taken a look at him and the Bills have taken a look at him and bringing up Dave Gettleman to say that uh, that offer that we've been giving you for weeks, it now stands as real. Uh, why do you in your mock draft choose Bradley Chubb as the Giants option, number two overall? Uh, once again, it comes down to studying the general manager. You have to understand David Gettleman was reared on the knee of George Young. And George Young, um, longtime executive for the Giants, believes that when you're the Giants, you have to excel at getting big people. You need to overwhelm people with your size, your strength, and your toughness. And so they've always believed in New York that it's a big man's game, that the NFL is big boy football. And so those close to Dave Gellman have told me that he loves the big guys. And so when you look at this board, uh, the two big guys that would be intriguing, Quentin Nelson and Bradley Chubb, when you think about the immediate impact, obviously they're a team that could benefit from a pass rusher. You let JPP go down to Tampa Bay. So now you're looking for a guy that can be a dominant force off the edge. Bradley Chubb is that guy. And the last time that the Giants picked high up there, when they picked two overall, they got a guy named Lawrence Taylor. Mm. They always have a tendency to harken back to the past. Bradley Chubb could certainly fit the bill in being a dominant pass rusher. But I'll put an asterisk by that because there are going to be some people in the building that want to make sure that they elevate the play of the quarterback, Eli Manning. Dave Gellerman is a huge Eli Manning fan. He believes he's a standard for what a franchise quarterback should be. Even though he's declined a little bit, they believe they can put the right pieces around him to get him back up to snuff. Um, Saquon Barkley is a special player, a guy that can do it as a runner, but also as a receiver. And the prospect of putting an offensive lineup that features Odell Beckham Jr., yeah. Sterling Shepard, wow. Evan Ingram, and Saquon Barkley in the backfield is something that's going to be enticing, particularly to an offensive coach like Pat Shermer. They could go that route because they want to get the quarterback to play at a high level, and it wouldn't surprise me. I'm saying Chubb, but I think Saquon Barkley is also a very, very real possibility. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.